Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel Angie B Crafts. Thank you so much for joining me. First things first, happy 2021. So last year wasn't the best year for a lot of us and there's been a lot of changes for everyone across the world. And one of the changes that's been made for me is that crafting has now become what I do. This is now my job. Um, I've spent 30 years working as an occupational therapist and the pandemic meant that the schools that I usually go into who employ me privately didn't have any children that they were bringing in who we could do assessments with etc etc so I suddenly thought well, what can I do oh I know I can do what I like to do and see what happens as a result of that it's now led on to me being a full-time crafter and I'm really, really pleased about it. It's an opportunity for me to now do what I want to do that I have a strong, strong passion for. Um, it's not about money. It's not about um, doing what other people like. It's about me sharing my knowledge, sharing my skills and making things that make me happy. So crafting has kind of saved me both from a mental health perspective it's given me an escape from the stress and the strain and the worry of life with COVID. Um, but it's also given me a way of growing as the person I am. And one of the things that has happened during lockdown is the opportunity to start working in collaboration with other crafters. And I am really, really pleased to have the opportunity to work with Dawn. Dawn is amazing. She does so many different types of crafting. She can make cards faster than anyone else I've ever known. It's brilliant. I love watching it. It's like, how many cards can you make in 30 seconds? 27. It's brilliant. But what we've decided to do is to start doing these collaborations. And I'm sure you'll have seen collaborations. It's about two people having the same, either the same list of things they can use or the same kit and seeing what they make with it. So we had the brief, we sort of chatted between ourselves and came up with the brief of we've got an A5 grey board, Ta -da. Um, we can use three bright colours of green, yellow and pink. So I've kind of pulled all my greens, yellows and pinks out and I've got some pencils and watercolours around as well because I don't know what I'm going to use yet, I haven't decided that. And the only other thing that was on the list was hot air balloons. So I've done some routing and I've found some MDF hot air balloons, which I absolutely love. These are from Pretty Gets Gritty and they're brilliant. I've got them on the front of, I'll show you, let me show you my little dream book. There it is. So this is one of the Pretty Gets Gritty um, hot air balloons. They're brilliant. And this is my dream book that I write in every day. Okay. The other thing that I found was actually a stamp set that was, bear with me one second, it was a Chocolate Baroque stamp set. Now I've had this stamp set, I would say for two years, it's called Steampunkery um, and it was just its grey sheet. So today I actually stuck, my goodness it didn't take long for that to get mucky, I've actually stuck the easy mount on the back of it so I can now actually start using them and I've cut them out. I've not cut all of them out because I do rather dislike cutting out stamps which is why it's taken me two years but I've stamped these up just as a try to see how well they stamp and I'm in love. So they're hot air balloons, they've got, this one's got a basket, you know it's got a propeller, it's got a basket underneath it so it's still a balloon and it's in there and this one is very much a hot air balloon shape but it's got a ship underneath it. So they're hot air balloons. I've also got this stamp, which, oh, it says on it, oh, it says it's a Stampendous stamp from 2013. There you go. That's a Stampendous stamp from 2013. Um, I think I've used it maybe once on a, a journal page. So, and then I found this. This is a set of um, Free With The Magazine stamps. And look, there's a little digi tiny hot air balloon. So I've kind of pulled together some hot air balloon things. Other things that I've brought onto my desk are gel medium, pretty gets gritty, 
I love this one because it dries clear, so it's brilliant. If you put loads on it, it doesn't matter. White gesso from Pretty Gets Gritty. I've got my transparent gesso because I'm not sure if I'll need it. And I've got some sand texture paste. So these are my kind of go-to. The Pretty Gets Gritty range I absolutely love. I love the products. Um, I am on their design team, so I'll be honest about that. But even before I was on the design team, I was in love with the products. Um, and it's just kind of given me an opportunity to work with them more and more and more. These are Pretty Gets Gritty as well. These are the Get Crackle Gels, um, which are a single step crackle gel. So I love those. I've recently discovered Ecoline pens. If you've seen any of my other videos, you may have seen that I've used the Ecoline pens on a couple of things. So they're a watercolour brush pen. Of course, my Dina Wakely gloss sprays. Where would I be without these? I honestly have no idea. They are the best thing ever invented. And I've also picked up my Dilusions paints. Um, I love these. I do love them. I did have some of that, I still have some of the big tubs, but I was one of the people who didn't manage to look after them the way you needed to, to keep them fresh. So a lot of them went a bit lumpy. So I love that Dilutions have now brought them out in these little bottles. Um, and they're really vibrant matte paints. So that's kind of where I'm at. Beyond that, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I think the first thing we need to do is get some gesso onto here. And I'm going to put white gesso down because I want the vibrancy of the colours to stand out. Now, one of the things. Oh, I've just realised. I don't know if I've got my heat gun plugged in. Just bear with me. Oh, I have. That's good. Um, one, one of the things that you can do with this grey board that I love is you can use it to cover things. So it's this is an A5 one. Now, I haven't measured it to say this is bang on A5, but it's out of a pack of A5 grey board. Um, and its grey board is basically thick cardboard. It's been mushed together, um, so it's a bit more solid. You can use it in construction. You can use it to make the front of a book or the front of a junk journal, or um, you can use it to make home decor because it is really, really solid. But you can also die cut it. So if you want die cut with dimension, if you've got a suitable die, so that like the big dies from Sizzix that will cut through something or some mixed media dies. There's more companies coming out with mixed media dies now. So they're really good for cutting through grey board and then you can get a much more 3D um, look on your projects. I'm spraying this and then looking for this. I knew I'd have one somewhere. I always have a raggy to hand. So I tidy up before I do a video. And my tidying up apparently involves moving things from one surface to another in my craft room and forgetting where they are. So that is my standard go-to, oh my word, where's everything I'm meant to have. Right, I'm going to give this a very quick blast. So we now have a white grey board. One of the best things to put down as a base layer that I find is my gloss sprays because they cover a larger area. I'm just going to pop my stamps over to the other side because I'm spraying across the card and I don't want my stamps to get covered in it. And at the minute I've got a laptop just up ahead of me so I'm using my um, medium pots to protect my laptop. So because I've now put gesso down, the first layer of my gloss spray isn't going to absorb straight in as it would have done if I'd have sprayed straight onto the grey board. I can actually show you that on the back. I flip this over and spray on. You can see that's just soaked straight in. You lose an awful lot of your colour. Whereas if you actually gesso it first, the colour <coughs> excuse me sits on top of the gesso. so pleased when we decided to go for bright colours. I know usually I'm a grunge girl and I am I am still a grunge girl even with bright colours but at the minute 
doing lots of bright coloured things. I've done some, these Dilutions paints are currently getting used quite a bit. The orange one, I've got the um, psychedelic orange one, which is rather nice. So you can see there, we're getting some lovely, lovely mixing of colour. Now because we've got the gesso, we're getting the movement. We don't get that movement if we spray, just spray straight onto the grey board because it gets sucked in. But we can start to get some lovely, look at the kind of marbling effect you get as the colours start to mix with each other. So I'm going to get the heat gun again and I'm going to heat this off just so that we're not waiting for it. We now have a grey board. It's got a bit of a bend on it because we've taken a lot of the moisture off the top layer so it's just forcing the board to bend. Now you can use what D Diane Reevely calls the bum oven and once it's all done put it under your bum to flatten it. The other way is you can actually heat the back of it. So there's a few different ways that you can actually add the uh, add. You can actually achieve getting it flat. So don't panic if it starts to bow. It just means that the pieces of the material, as you heat one side, it does this. So if you heat the other side, quite often it comes flat again. So don't panic. Okay, I want to put some crackle glaze on here just because crackle glaze is fab. So I've got my three colours again. I love the fact we're using just these three colours. I'm like a kid in a sweet shop today. It feels like they're all the um, all the different coloured sweets you can get. What's the... There's one... Opal fruits. They're not called opal fruits anymore. What are they called now? Starbursts. That's it. These colours remind me of starbursts. So I'm putting on a really thin layer. And the reason I'm putting on a thin layer is because I want it to dry quickly. So this stuff, the thicker you put it on, as with anything, the thicker you put it on, the longer it takes to dry. But also with this, if you put it on and it's too thick, or and it's very thick, it will also um, get bigger cracks in it. So I'm just gonna put some excess on here because I don't want to put this it's got pink in it as well I don't want to put it back in the jar so I'm literally just going to make almost a separate piece here just as a runoff piece and it can then be chopped up and used or torn and used in art journals on other pieces there's a whole host of things you can do with them so don't ever feel that if you've got extra bits or it gets contaminated that it's wasted it isn't so with this crackle gel, it's designed, as I say, as a one part gel, um, which is really good because it means you don't have to put one part on, heat it up, put another part on, etc, etc. You just slap it on. It is trans translucent, so you still see the colour underneath. You can see here, I've put a layer of yellow, but it just looks like I've put a shiny layer on because it's a very thin layer. You maybe just be able to see that there's a layer of yellow on top there. And then you can still see the colours underneath. So as long as your, your colour underneath is dry, you're not going to get mud. So I am literally just slapping this on. I'm not really paying heed as to where it goes. I'm just wanting to add on the three different colours. This is going to be a really vibrant piece. Hey, hey. I'm excited. I'm excited for this year actually because I think it's going to be a much better year. I know that I've got goals that I'm setting in my own mind for what I'm going to do for the year. Last year I didn't have those, I didn't think of any goals, I didn't know where I was going last year. I was just plodding along in life. This year I've got such a passion for getting the business up and running that I'm just so focused on it. I'm working more hours than I've ever worked in my life trying to get the business going. It's brilliant. I love it. Right, so with Crackle Gel, you have two options. You can leave it to dry on its own, which it does do, and you end up with your crackles, or you can heat set it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and pop it to one side, out of the way, and just let it set to an extent on its own, because in the meantime, we can do some playing with these balloons as well. 
Now I'm thinking that these balloons need a little bit of texture. So, trying to decide, yeah, I'll put the sand texture paste on first. I was just trying to decide which order to do it in. So this sand texture paste, you can see I've just put pink in it, hey ho. Um, it's basically, it's a water-based acrylic with sand in it, I'm just reading off the label, but it's it's got a real grittiness to it. So it does have a really satisfying texture. If you're a bit funny with the, the noise of something scraping, you might not like working with it because it does have a grittiness but personally that I find that really satisfying do, do, do. so I filled in all those holes but don't panic because I will remove it from them as well this is just getting a layer on I just want it to look I know you you normally would have hot air balloons that were smooth but this is for art so the same rules don't apply, it's how you want it to look and it's something that's really important with your artist. Some artists spend the time thinking, oh I want to fit in and it's actually one of the people who I'm on a design team for has said to me, you're on this team because of the art you do, not so that you can try and fit in with the art that other people do. And I thought, that's really good advice with your art and your crafts. Make things that are you, and then you'll be happy doing it. If you're making something that you think somebody else is going to like, or you're hoping somebody else is going to like, it doesn't work out as well, and you end up being a lot more self-critical, because it's not what you love. And if you're doing what you love, you love what you're doing. It makes you much happier. So make your art and your crafts for yourself. So you can see this is my very, very tatty, very well used, no longer has the, the rubberized cover on it, got all sorts of gunk on it, pokey tool, high tech stuff. And I'm literally just going in and poking from the back just so that I can see where the hole is. And I'm gonna use that mop up sheet because we can add texture to that as well. Oops knock everything over. Might end up having to use, no, I'll just use my raggy. So my raggies get really solid because I wipe everything off on them. They get gel medium, they get grit paste, they get granite paste, crackle gel, various acrylics, gessos, glues, everything gets wiped off. Doo -doo -doo. So once you know where your holes are, you can just scrape through them. And I tend to just take any excess off the back, purely from the point of view of sticking it onto something, because if it's got, this will set hard, and if it's on the back, it's gonna make it challenging to actually lay it flat. Do, do, do. We'll get in there. Right, there's one done. So these are slightly different sizes. We've got a, larger and a smaller because I thought then it would give the impression of distance one more in the foreground one more in the background now you can see from the colors I've used it's not really going for a sky look it's going for a let's see where we end up look it's just going to happen to have balloons on it and one of the things that I've been pondering as well I saw it on someone else's video about what's the one word that will sum up 2020 for you and for me as I say it's been a really actually a really positive year I've gotten to spend wonderful time with my wife with my son I've learned so much about the craft business I've completely changed my career um, and I mean my son was at university and had to come home, he was in his final year at university he'd barely been home in the two and a half years prior to coming home in February, March, February, March time can't remember the exact date um, he rarely came home 
he just didn't want to he wanted to stay at university and that's fine it's about him being him but I missed him so to have him then come home and be with me all the time was rather nice challenging at times because he's my son and sons can be annoying but then again so can mums so that's okay but yeah he um, it's been lovely to get to spend that time with him and he's got his first job now and it's really nice to have seen him grow into the young man that he is um, so yeah for me the one word is opportunity so I'm hoping somehow that I'm going to get that word onto here because this with it being hot air balloons it's making me think about flying high um, doing positive things in life um, and opportunity of what has been and the opportunities I've taken this year plus the opportunities that are going to arrive for me in 2021 Right, I'm just going to give these a quick blast and then I will be back to chat with you again. So you may have noticed there, I was just poking at this a little bit. So there were two reasons for it. The first one was the fact that it was a thicker layer than the rest, so it was, wasn't was drying as much underneath. But the second one, it was actually starting to balloon up. <laughs> the irony. Um, it was starting to balloon up just into a solid piece and I wanted it to have more texture. So I just popped it so the air went out. So you can see it's now fairly solid. Right, so I now have two options for what I'm going to do. I know I want a layer to unify the sand texture paste and the MDF so that when I add the colour, it's going to react in the same way. But the question I'm now asking is, do I want it all to be a white base or do I want it to be the colours it is, so a darker and a lighter, and then you're going to get a slight different look, so you'll get a differentiation here when the colours hit. I'm thinking I'm going to go for transparent so that this colour is still there. So this is transparent gesso. It's something that I've only actually discovered exists this year, I must admit. Because when I was doing crafting before this year, I was doing it for fun. So I wasn't necessarily looking for absolutely everything that was out there. It was just if I saw something, I thought, oh, that's good. I'll have that. Whereas when you're doing it for a living, you start investigating your options and you, I'm much more aware now of what it is I'm trying to achieve. So I don't want that to be totally filled in with gesso. So I'll just take it off. I'm just using what's in the lid because there's loads in the lid. And I am popping it all over. So it's to unify. Remember your gesso is an undercoat. It is designed to give you a uniform surface across whatever it is you're painting. So if this was paper, card, wood, um, texture paste, uh, an acrylic based product, plastic, resin, whatever it is, the gesso gives you the same base so that when you then add colour you're going to get the same reaction from all the various parts of it. Now I think I've got most of it going to add a little bit more down this side just to make sure I mean it doesn't matter because of the style of this it doesn't matter as much if some of it reacts a little bit differently but I like the idea of knowing that it's going to react pretty similarly similarly that's a quite hard word to say isn't it I don't think I'd be quite as good at saying that after a beverage or two So I'm hoping that no one's suffering too much this New Year's Day of 2021 um, from having imbibed in too much alcohol last night. I don't suppose, well I don't know, I, suppose more, I don't suppose as many people will be going out because you can't, but I suppose there's still going to be people having beverages, even if it's just to say, here we go again. I think this is a really good year. It's going to be a good year. And I'm determined to make it a good year. I'm determined to do what I can to make sure that for me and my family, this is a good year. And that is my mindset. My mindset is about being positive. Um, and don't get me wrong, stuff still happens. Bad stuff still happens. 
you still have to deal with all the rubbish in life but if you can try and see a positive outcome we use very much use a lot of um, gratitude in our house so when I'm taking my son to work or when I'm picking him up from work I always get him to give me I get him to give me five which is five things that he's grateful for at that point in time and he usually goes no and then does it I can be persuasive um, and it's really helpful because it's helping him to see the positives in some situations that aren't necessarily positive um, and then when we have meals together we go around and have positives five positives when we eat together because we don't always eat together because of shifts and things um, but when we eat together we'll have five positives as well and it's it's nice to have that positivity in life it's good right I'm just going to blast this and then we can get on with adding colour so here we have our two balloons now they're still a bit warm I'm just going to wipe up a little bit here find a clean bit of my raggy and my water and just get rid of these lumps and bumps if you ever wonder about how you're going to get your um, gloss spray off your mat use your alcohol gel it works wonderfully so here we have our balloons I'm going to use gloss sprays to decorate them because I think they do it really really well um, I think I've done this quite a few times now so you may have seen this before but I've not done it with the gesso and not necessarily done it with the texture paste either so I'm not worrying you'll notice I always take my gloss spray off to the side it's just because there's my ragged and I'm just cleaning the nozzle you'll notice when you put your gloss sprays on that they resist each other because they are a plastic they're designed to resist each other so you get some lovely mixing of the colour and it can give you some really interesting effects oh I forgot my pink was playing silly beggars right, I actually want a little bit more of the pink down there but I want it not on the rest I want it just on the basket right pink is nearly done right there's a little bit there so I'm just going to use a brush and paint it on so you don't have to use a spray as a spray all the time you can use it just as you would your other paints and actually paint it on it just is convenient having it in the spray bottle so there's my balloons I'm going to mop up some of this using a piece of card oh, I'm liking the way that page is starting to look mm -hmm. right give these another quick blast I'm not overly worried with these about the fact that they're totally dry because I'm going to put them to one side but you'll see here can you see how it's still a bit darker here so we've got some green up here that's quite bright and then when we come down here the green has actually got a much darker tone to it and that's because it's got the wood behind it because we didn't paint it in white and because we've got the wood behind it it's absorbing more of the light so we get a different tone so that's something to bear in mind and that's one of the benefits of clear gesso so we'll pop the balloons over there and hope that I remember where they are and give another quick mop. You can see I've got absolutely loads of the gloss spray on my mat now so I will try and remember at the end to show you how you can clean that off. It's amazing, it amazes me every time I do it. Right, let's have a look at this. Do we have crackles yet? Oh, we have the beginnings of some crackles. So I'm thinking I might have to. Oh, you can just—I don't know if you can see. Let's bring the light over a little. Oops, over a little bit. There's just the beginning of some crackles around here. So I think we need to leave that a little while longer. So as such, I am going to pop it there, and I shall come back to you once that's dried and crackled. 
Right, well, I'm back and this has now crackled. Can you see all that glorious crackle? I love it. So we now have a bit more of a background. Um, we have balloons. Now I'm thinking that those balloons don't really stand out enough because they're the same colours. So I'm going to add in some white just to make them stand out. But before I do that, I want to do some stamping. Now I'm thinking my little balloon, maybe in a couple of places, might be nice. Right. We'll use the little balloon and we'll use the Versafine Claire to stamp it. Now this is a brand new stamp so before I stamp it onto my piece I am going to stamp it onto a piece of card just to make sure that it works okay. Oh beautiful, beautiful. Right. So we'll do that. I want it that way up. I want it that way. I think I prefer it that way up. Yeah, love it that way. And I'm looking for an area that's not got quite as much of the crackle on. So that I'm not trying to stamp over a ledge. I'm leaving it on a couple of seconds longer because obviously it's going onto acrylic. Oh, that's come out quite well. <clears throat> now you can use your stays on for going onto acrylic. The stays on is solvent based ink, so it will go onto acrylic better and it will dry better than the uh, Versafine Claire. However, two reasons I don't. Number one, my stays on is needing to be replaced, and number two, I really like stamping with the Versafine Claire. Just personal preference, I love it. I'm going to put one of these down the bottom, I think. Uh, da -da -da -da, where should we put it? That's quite a flat area. I'll have it here. Oh, you can see there, I've not quite gotten it as well on there, but that's fine because we can do things to hide that. I'm not sure what yet, but we'll do something. Now the other thing that I have here is some clouds and some wee birds. Um, again, these are pretty gets gritty MDF pieces. Hmm. Right, I'm just gonna watch these. Oh, sorry. Watch the camera. I'll just block these off. Like I said, the Versafine Claire doesn't absorb into the acrylic quite as much. So it's worth blotting it just so that you're not ending up snurging it. And we know we have our main two. Now these aren't ready for going on yet, but they're getting there. I'm thinking if we have a couple of clouds on there and maybe a couple of little birds, that could be interesting. Okay. So I know I need some white in the background to put my balloons on, so I'm going to have one here and one here. And the reason I'm putting the white on is so that it's um, going to stand out more. Because what happens is if you put, the, if you put similar colours together, there's no way of making them stand out. Whereas if you just add a layer of white, it will then stand out. Check I've got, oh no, that's the sun texture face. Where have I put my white dress? Oh, there it is. I should really label up the pots on top so I don't have to keep looking at the labels. Okay, so I'm thinking the bigger balloon here. So I want it from there to there, from there to there. So I'm just doing a vague outline of where I want to put the white gesso. Oh, yeah, it's gesso. 
So I'm just popping this down. I want it to be a thin layer. I'm not looking at a massively thick layer. I'd actually probably call it more of a gentle wash. I'm going to brush off the excess and then take off a bit more of the paint. So I'm just paling down the colours really. Just so that the balloons, when they go on, will stand out. In fact, I think I will use Raggy to take some of that off now it's a bit thinner. So you can see it's just a bit paler now, but most of the paint has now come off. So it's not about having the white paint there. It's about having a paler area so that now when I put this on it pops out a little bit more okay you're also getting the opportunity you can see there of some of that fabulous crackle the camera would refocus a little bit to be shown up with the white so do the same with the smaller one down here A little bit of paint. Roughly here. There we go. And then we'll take it off with a raggy again. I'll just pop my lid back on as well. And give this a rub with a raggy. So it's quite a nice way to soften down brighter colours is to just put a layer of gesso or white paint on top and we now have these almost like little features I'm just going to rub that edge a little bit more it's a bit too edgy <laughs> and I don't mean edgy as in a good thing there we are so we've got that and we got that okay so they're still not quite ready for going on because I want to go around the edges with a different colour but it's a starting point so the other thing that I'm wanting to paint is my clouds so clouds generally kind of whitey tone but I'm thinking to keep the clouds in keeping with the other colours that maybe I don't know if this will work but there's no harm in trying Oh, that's the transparent gesso. Have I just put my white gesso that I've had? There it is. So get a little bit of gesso and I've just put some eco line or echo line down in the yellow. So you can see it's just giving a hint of a yellow colour. I'll pop some more down. So this is just a watercolour pen. So I'm not putting it actually onto the paint. I'm bringing it to the paint I'm bringing the paint to it so we're just taking the starkness off the white that's all I'm trying to do it's just removing some of that starkness because we don't want these floating white puff balls that look a bit out of place so I think I'm going to do one with the yellow but I think I might actually do one in pink and for these I am going around the edges the reason I'm going around the edges is the edges on MDF that's been laser cut have a bit of a burnt look so they're quite dark and clouds don't tend to be that dark on the edges they just kind of sit there in a cloudy way right let's have a pink cloud as well I'll do that one down here so you can see this is just these have got a brush nib on them so we've got a the ability to move the nib you can get nice little patterns as well um, but they're really good if you just pop them down on here and then add paint into them you can see it more obviously with this one it just takes on the colour oh that's the wrong one this is my pink cloud so again this is 
fantasy. This isn't the real world. You don't tend to have orange, green and pink skies in splodges with crackles on it. So why do the clouds have to be white cloudy colours? Why can't there be yellow and pink as well? So that's what I'm doing. Why not? So we're doing vibrant but this is just vibrant colours mixed with a bit of white so I suppose it could possibly be classed as a little bit of a cheat but I'm sure Don will let me off. There we go. Now I'm not quite convinced that's yellow enough so I'm going to put down a load of ink this time. Rinse off my brush to get the pink off it because I don't want that influencing the yellow. And then a little bit of paint. Ah, that's got more yellow to it. Yes, that's better. Let's make this yellower. Yellower. -er. More yellow. Let's use correct English. More yellow. These are making me think of bonbon sweets. They're in kind of nice yellows and pinks, aren't they? And white. Oh, I haven't had bonbons for years. Rather nice sweets though. Kill your teeth. It's one of those sweets that I sometimes got on the way home from school from the corner shop at the bus station. Quarter of bonbons. Or if you didn't have much money that day, you'd have two ounces. Let's just mop up a little bit. So I do love my mats. The only reason that I'm working on a brown mat instead of my white mat underneath is I've noticed on some of my videos there's some lines on the mat with a white one. So I'm trying it without and see where we end up. Right, what are we going to do with these birds? I don't want them to be totally stark. Oh, we haven't used any dilutions paint yet, have we? Let's pop a little bit of this out. Forgot they had a ball in them. So if a manufacturer puts a ball into a paint, ooh, just knocked my uh, water bottle off and it got caught on a wire, which was quite handy. Um, use the ball because it's there for a reason. The manufacturers obviously decided it's needed. So some components must separate out in that paint or else they wouldn't bother putting the balls in them. So if they do use them, give them a shake. Right, so again, we're going for bright colours. Paint the little birdies. The birdies are kind of synonymous with hot air balloons, aren't they? Because they kind of fly in the sky together. Well, in my mind, they are anyway. There's a, um, a festival, there's a town in Leyland near Preston, there's a town called Leyland near Preston, and every year they have a um, festival the name of which I can't remember but anyway one of the things they have at the festival most years is loads of hot air balloons oh no kites sorry I'm telling a lie it's kites not hot air balloons I'm getting confused but anyway even talking about the kites they're amazing they're well worth going and, look, and having a look if you're anywhere near there and it's on next year so obviously with lockdown it wasn't on this year um, but I used to go when I lived around there long time ago yep there's one bird so we want these two different ways I'll swap my brush over again so I don't put yellow in because I don't really want yellow on these oh, these are just fab just such a, a simple shape of a bird and it just I love it really simple and really effective so again I'm going to use these up on here and don't be afraid of thinking oh that looks a little bit of a mess even if you want to use part of a page that you use as a mop-up page it's still the start of something 
when I'm not on camera I mop up far far more so none of this wiping with a raggy until I've gotten most of it off onto a range of different art journals and things I've got some fabulous 4 before art journals that are really good for just mopping up small amounts they're the pink pig ones which is kind of my go to art journal at the minute I do have other brands I've got my Dina Wakely one and my uh, Dilusions one and got to junk and disorderly which I do quite like that one but I've kind of lost bits of it the junk and disorderly one is from oh flipping like I can't remember who it's from I want to say indigo blue but I wouldn't be sure um, but it's a really cool one because it's basically bored but it's held together with just little rings so you make your pages and it doesn't matter how fat they get. Um, Julia McNeil from JMC Designs loves a junk and, junk and disorderly. Um, and it's, she's actually, she's just put a video up recently about how to um, make your own using sort of excess cardboard and things, which is well worth a watch. If you're not already following Julia, please, please do. She's brilliant. She makes some amazing things. And she also has a really cool range of digi stamps and of actual stamps and stencils and things. Right, so I've now got three birds, two clouds, two 3D balloons, three 2D balloons. Right, we're getting there. I would like to edge these. And I'm going to edge them in silver. I don't want to edge those. I want to edge these. Um, so this is patina cream, and it's not. This isn't silver. It's actually black pearl. It's like a, um, a dark silver, if you like. Um, these are really good. They're like a gilding wax, but softer. They're really soft and squishy. And what you can do when you first put them on, I like the look of them because they've got a bit of matte to them. They're not really, really shiny. But then if you leave them for about half an hour to an hour and then give them a buff, they stand out more as shinier. And it's so you've got the option. You can either have it as a a kind of sheen rather than a shine or a proper shine. So they're from Pretty Gets Gritty, I can't remember who said that. Like I say, I love the Pretty Gets Gritty products. I've actually just put an order in. Um, Pretty Gets Gritty products are sold on Hochanda. Lynette, who owns it, doesn't currently have a website. So she sells through Hochanda and they are brilliant products. Um, I'd used quite a few of them before I was lucky enough to be accepted onto their design team. And I just love the fact that I know I'm on the design team. I've got an excuse to keep buying them. It's great. Right. So there we have those. Now let's see what the composition looks like and see how we like it. I'm actually thinking there's too much of a line there again now. Pop a little bit of water on my cloth and let's see if we can just knock back that edge a little bit. No, left it too long. Alright, we'll not worry about it. We shan't worry. I'm thinking one of these birds is going to be the rescue for this. There we go. See, you wouldn't know there was a bit missing. And I want another one up here. So I'm purposely putting the birds. This is onto the yellows and greens, so I've put the pink one. And then the others I'm kind of putting on the darker background because they're paler colours. Where do we want the clouds? I actually want the clouds coming off the page a little bit. But before I do that, I want to edge the page. Right, so I'm going to edge the page up 
then assemble and then I think we're pretty much done. So for edging the page up I've got to use my stays on. So as I say my stays on pad is a bit tatty, it's not got a great deal of ink on. So it's got enough ink on it to do something like this and to edge a piece because you can put pressure on and the pads, I mean the pad's been annihilated from doing this on so many projects um, but it hasn't got enough ink on it to get a decent stamp if you want a bit of a shadowy stamp it'd be perfect but it hasn't currently got enough on it to get a decent stamp and then I'm intentionally bringing in that black I tend to do this I said I, I did a video recently that I was talking about the fact I, I don't do black in any part of my life I just I never have black clothes I don't think I even own a pair of black shoes my winter boots are brown and blue two separate pairs not one pair so I don't do black I don't have black boots black shoes black coats black I own do I own a pair of black trousers no I own one black skirt that's the only item of black clothing I have um, so black on my work is really weird because I do use it a lot to edge my work and grunge it up and mucky it up so just thought I'd tell you that I have black in different parts of my life so I'm using the gel from Pretty Gets Gritty the gel medium um, there's loads of different gel mediums out there use the one that you're comfortable with I like this one number one it comes in a pot rather than in a, a bottle. I've got some that come in a bottle as well. Um, I like it because it's in a pot. You can get your knife in there. I also like it because it dries clear. So it doesn't matter how much of a botch up you make, it's going to dry clear, even if you put too much on. Some of the ones, it's a slightly gloss finish. It's not really, really super shiny. It's slightly gloss. Um, but some of the ones that are matte will actually not dry clear because of the process for getting the matte gel medium in. I don't know what that process is but I believe that that's the reason they don't dry matte. I'm not an expert on the making of gel mediums. So I'm hanging this one off the side and I'm going to pop this one off the side and the top. So it's worth doing what I've just done there is just check where is it I need to put the glue because there's no need to put glue up here because it's not going to be in contact with the page so just figure out where you're putting it and then you don't waste your glue when I mean, you can choose to put it all over it's entirely up to you but that's just one of the things I do I check where something is going to be right now we'll use our rescue one and it's rescue as in it's doing the rescuing not that it needs to be rescued it's going to rescue our dodgy balloon down here. See if we can get as much of that as possible covered. There we go. Perfecto. And then this one. I think we might have him coming off a little bit as well. Right, so I now need to think about how I'm going to put my sentiment on. Well, I haven't thought of this. I don't even know if I need a sentiment on it, but I'd like to put the word opportunity on. What I might do is write it out on a piece of card and see whether or not I like my writing enough. Generally, the answer to that would be no. I'm not the neatest of writers, but you never know. I'm actually rather liking how that looks. I'm on a bit of a wonk now, there we go. Right, so I'll pop that just out of the way for a moment and get some, let me see, some bright card in one of the allowed colours. Hmm, easier said than done, methinks. So I found these and I'm thinking something that's similar to opportunity because if you put opportunity it'd take up the whole thing 
but we might get away with chance. What do we think? Jack, I've actually got all the letters. Chance. Can we put chance on here? Yes, I think we're going to do that. Right, take the letters off. And we are going to use the dilutions, I think, for painting these up, just because they dry quicker. Oh, a bit too much. Never mind. And I think I'm going to do them all in pink because I do want it to stand out. Let's see how they take it. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Make sure I've got all of it. So I want it coloured all the way around. Doesn't really matter about the underneath, that's just being pedantic, isn't it? So opportunities are just chances. They're a chance to learn, a chance to develop, a chance to grow, a chance to love, a chance for happiness. They're all chances and we need to take the chance. As Abba would say, take a chance on me. If you need me, let me know, I'm gonna be around. Sorry, I've got a dreadful singing voice, I do apologise. I've got friends who are in choirs and things and they always laugh at my voice. It's a bit rude really, but you know, I've known them a long time, they can get away with it. I do sing a lot though. I sing happy tunes out of tune, but it makes me happy. We all sing a lot actually. We'll go around the house and one of us will start a song and everyone else joins in, it's great. Do, 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 do. Right, so I figured out where this do to do to do, do song or tune comes from that I use a lot when I'm doing my crafting stuff, and it's the concept of kind of bimbling along, um, so sort of just plodding along through life, do 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 do, a bit oblivious to what's going on, and happy and content. So that's what that is about. I'm happy and content in my crafting, bimbling along, making things that make me happy. I think one of the most difficult things as a creator is when you are commissioned by someone else. I did a couple of commissions earlier in the month and it was really weird because it was like, oh, I've actually got to consider if someone else is going to like this because I'm doing it at their request and they've given me their instructions and I can't just do my own thing and then they say oh I like that I'll have it I'm having to do what they want me to do it was a very bizarre feeling I do I don't do many commissions I do do some but I don't do many um, because I do prefer to create for me if other people happen to like it and happen to want to buy it then on you go I do sell stuff but don't create on request usually, but it was actually a friend from childhood who asked me for it. So I thought, oh, fair enough then. Right. I'm just going to mop up this paint. I should really get this onto the page, shouldn't I? Let's get a little bit of this pink onto here. Put some on this side. Get some of that texture covered. See, even the bits of texture that we've stuck on here earlier. We can use them up. I love this Dilutions paint. Look how bright and vibrant that is. It's such a fabulous colour. 
I don't think it shows up terribly well on camera. It's actually a beautiful bubblegum pink. In fact, I think that's the name. Let me just check. Yeah, bubblegum pink. And it is. It's the perfect name for it. This one is called Lemon Drop. And this one is called Island Parrot. So there you go. Right. Do a bit of a mop up. Just protect the ones that I've just painted. Clear some of this away. So the only reason I'm clearing this away is so I don't get the paint all over the back when I bring the other piece back in. I'm going to give these a very quick blast. They're near, near enough dry, but just let's take off that excess. So here's the letters. These letters were from the works. I got them just before Christmas and I rather like them. I think it was £3 or something for that box that I just showed you of them. I think it's rather a good deal really. Right, back to my gel medium. I have actually ordered some more of this gel medium because it's nearly all gone. Right. Get off my finger. Not meant to stick to my finger. There we go. When you do something like this, you suddenly think, I hope I spell this right. Because it is obviously very simple to just suddenly put the letters in the wrong order. I am rather liking this. I hope you like it as well, but I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> so modest. I think the only thing that I would change is that I'd try and reduce that down a little bit because there's quite a lot of um, white there. I think I was a bit too specific in my placement, <clears throat> which is made it look like I've just painted another balloon behind it. That's the only thing I'd change. But I'm loving these colours. Absolutely loving them. And I think this would be a really nice book cover. Uh, C and E. So we didn't talk when we set the challenge about using letters and stuff, so I need to put something on. Mm, there, I think. Wipe that off. Right, so I'm thinking that that's it done. Chance. Take a chance on life. Here's hoping that we all get the opportunity to take lots of positive and amazing chances throughout 2021. I hope you've enjoyed this as my first collaboration with Dawn from Shiny Silver Treasures. Please pop over and see Dawn if you're not already subscribed to it. Shiny Silver Treasures on YouTube. Um, well worth a look. She puts up videos at least once a day. She's really good at putting her videos up. She's far more organised at it than I am. Um, and she does a whole range of different things. She recently put one up where she used crocheting to make a flower that she then used on a mixed media project. <clears throat> Excuse me. Absolutely brilliant at what she does. Um, so yeah, pop over and see her. Like and subscribe to me. Um, if you want to follow me on other social media, Facebook is Angie B Cards and Crafts and on Instagram it's Angie Mary B. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you again soon. Bye.